Good morning, WP Sandine. It's Words of Wellness for another week. We're on episode number nine. It's hard to believe we've done nine episodes already. And our special guest this week is Mrs. Kasner. Yay! Kasner. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Archibald is here as well. So welcome. How are you two today? Thank you. Hey, thanks, Mrs. B, and uh, nice to have you here, Marlies. It's uh, it's great having another good day here, and uh, looking forward to uh, connecting with uh, Mrs. Kasner and learning a little bit more about her and sharing that with our uh, student population and the families in, in Shellbrook. So, awesome. And Mrs. Kasner, how have you been? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's a busy time at home, but um, enjoying trying to embrace this time and enjoy myself um, and try and get work done as well and enjoy the time with my children too. So, oh, that's um, so yeah, good. it's a definitely a juggling act, but it's, um, it's fun. Oh, well, that's good. So Mrs. Kasner, it looks like you're outside today. So we're interviewing you. It's a bit of gale force wind today. So you're good for you to be outside and enjoy the weather, even though it is a little windy today. So yes, we'll it's, um, it's not our perfect summer day, but that's for sure. But um, I still, it's still nice enough to be out here without a winter park on and freeze my butt off. So um, for it's sure. all good. That's awesome. Okay, so what we usually, or what I usually do every Words of Wellness, I ask our special guest uh, five questions. So I just have some five random questions that I'm going to ask you. So if you're ready, I'll get started. You ready? Sure. Okay, sure. so first question, which do you prefer, living in town or living in the country? Ooh, that one's kind of easy. Um, country. I was raised on a farm, um, grew up in the country, exploring in the bushes, climbing machinery, um, grain bins, everything like that. So um, being out on the country is kind of my home again. So um, I'm just loving the trees, the birds, the animals, moose tracking through our yards, deer, everything, having a big dog again outside, um, just all of those things um, I really love about the, being on the farm. That's awesome. Definitely so you're, those town things. Right. So um, your boys must just love it outside. Yes. They're outside making forts in the bush, bringing back deer, antlers, all kinds of sheds and stuff um, that finds that they <laughs> find awesome. in the bush. And <clears throat> it's good. We have a little creek behind our house too. So they, they like um, investigating that and seeing how wet they can get and all those kinds of things. So it's fun watching them play and grow up and being able to discover those things as well. So Oh, that is so the good. The I miss neighbors and I miss biking on pavement. That biking oh, yeah. on gravel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unpredictable really. You hit a rock and then you're all over. So absolutely. But miss the neighbors and seeing everybody and the convenience of run into the grocery store if you forget something. But true, yeah, it, we're loving the country life. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, number two, you and I know I've know, I've taught with you for many years here already. So and I know that you're a really healthy eater, and I always see you eating salad at lunchtime. So can you tell me what your favorite salad dressing is? Sister well, question. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Yeah, I don't really have a favorite. I switch up all the time. Like once I'm done one bottle, I go to another one. Next one I see in the grocery store. I do have my like ones I usually um, gravitate to, like the Greek feta or uh, okay. uh, one. Uh, sometimes I switch it up and have a Caesar for a while, a Caesar salad. Um, Italian, whatever is out there. My husband really likes ranch, so if I have nothing, I, I throw that on. So oh, yeah, I'm kind of like an all over kind of salad girl. I, I switch that up all the time. Well, that's Don't cool. get sick of it, I guess, then. No, well, it's Pardon? Good. I said that's good because some people have a hard time eating salad and you're just always eating salad. You're so healthy. So good. Well, I try, but <laughs> I, I do have my moments of uh, chips and chocolate too. <laughs> 
Yay, that's awesome. It's good to hear. Um, okay, yeah. so here's a question. Some of you may or may not know that Mrs. Kasner is a curler. And so here's a trick, bit of a trick question. So since you started curling from when you were really young, how many curling rocks do you think you have thrown, both competitively and just in practice and in games? So do you have a number? Ash is a hard one. I've never been asked how many rocks I've thrown. I've, and people ask me about hours and about how many practices and about all that kind of stuff. But oof, rocks. Well, let's think. Started curling when I was in grade five. That's like year 10, right? 11. Um, 38. Okay, so 27 years. <laughs> um, I curled, usually when I curled competitively, I curled at least 10 bond spiels um, a year and practiced anywhere from two to five times a week, depending on the season, timing of the season and where, it, how long it was. Um, and at practice, I didn't throw more than 30 rocks. If you asked how many, how many rocks I swept, that would be a lot more. <laughs> Because <laughs> you sweep twice as many as you throw at yeah, least. For sure. <laughs> um, but let's think. Um, doing the math, probably 80,000 to 100,000 rocks I've thrown wow. in my lifetime. That's amazing. In there. That's amazing, hey? That is amazing. Good for you. Wow. They, they say it takes quite a few hours to be a master at something, right? Is it 10,000 10, hours you have to put in? I think so, yes. Yeah, to get really good at something, if that's hockey or reading or whatever it is, right? So right. Um, I'm sure I've put in multiples of those hours. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, good for you. That's a lot of rocks. Holy man, over your life. That's amazing. It's a lot of time freezing on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never thought about it that way, but yes. <laughs> Okay, um, next question. What is the one thing that you have done during COVID to keep in shape? Because uh, there's no curling right now. And so what is one right. thing you've done either with your family, individually, by yourself, whatever that you've done? Because you are in shape. Well, thank you. I'm not as in shape as I'd like to be, but um, I... I try and be active every day. So whether that I don't do one certain thing, but uh, I do go for runs and my kids, I try and get them going with me and biking beside me when I'm running and pushing the third kid because he can't bike fast enough yet. Um, so we go for runs on the gravel road. We, I do little workouts at home in my living room, um, online ones just biking as well um but it's really tough biking on gravel but i i fight through that um and we just try and be active so gardening or or playing around the yard playing ball um catch different things like that so i'm right um, just trying to keep on moving all the time that's awesome biking awesome. at the lake on the weekends that kind of stuff yeah yeah it sounds like you guys are always on the go so it's nice to hear thanks for sharing what you're doing because some people may struggle. <laughs> they don't know what to do anymore. Right. And three young boys usually keep me running pretty good, too. Right. Just chasing yeah, them. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> okay. One more curling question, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Archibald. Okay. So okay. we know that you have curled competitively both two-person and four-person. Which one would you choose if you had to choose only one, or do you like them both Ooh. equally? Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one. There's pros and cons to both. Um, I love the four person curling. Obviously, I did that one the longest um, right. with my, my three girl teammates. Um, I loved the road trips with them. I loved rooming with my sister um, and just chatting and having those relationships with those girls and sure. having fun with them on and off the ice. Um, I love the competition and the travel that we got to do with that. Um, I found by the end, um, the games were a little bit long, like 10, 
10 ends, um, three and a half hours if you're on TV because they make you wait between ends and all that is a little bit long, but I miss, I miss the girlfriend, teammate um, right. stuff from the four, four person curling. Um, the two person curling, um, you're always in every shot. It's fast paced. It's going, it's, you never get bored cause you're right in there all the time. Um, every means so much and you're either sweeping or calling or throwing it. So mm -hmm. you're, well, or doing it all three of those at the same time. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's fast paced and intense. It's exhausting, but they're only an hour and a half game. So that's what I liked about that. Um, right now with family and, and staff, I feel like I don't have as much time ever as I want. And so those shorter games let us play a game, but then still have lots of time off the ice as well with family or with whatever. So um, having a male teammate is um, different than having a girl teammates too. So it was a little bit lonely because um, my own room and stuff like that, but it was good in a sense that I had time to reflect on myself and have my alone time when it, life's so busy at home as well. So sure. um, can't really pick. But I definitely miss the the girls four person curling, yeah, um, and the fast pace to the two man curling. So yeah, yeah. So you like them both? Play it again? I don't know what I'd pick. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. Girls. Yeah. yeah. Well, I it was, it was a great experience. Sorry, it was a great experience to be able to do the two man because I probably wouldn't have ever jumped right in, but. Um, uh, Dustin asked me to play in a national championship and that was my first real competition in it so um, I was grateful for that opportunity and we we ended up being third so it kind of at the national championship and the top two teams can go so we went to world so that really like dived me in pretty quick and I had a huge learning curve to learn it real quick um, in a couple months really to get going so um, definitely success has made it more fun as well too because it's really frustrating if you're if you're not yeah. making shots <laughs> well I can attest to that like I love curling and I'm out there in the regular league but nowhere near at the level that you are so it's fun to watch you when you're curling and and cheer you on so it's really good so oh, thanks and all that it's thanks and we're happy to have someone yeah. as like someone like you on our staff that's you know traveled and been a world champion and it's it's amazing so we're just happy that you're able to be with us today and I you can ask, answer all these crazy questions that I put together so <laughs> <laughs> okay Mr. Archibald your turn do you have anything to ask Mrs. Kasner well well yeah kind of as, as usual I'd like to know more about uh, the teacher's uh, career pathway how they uh, got into teaching and how you hmm. came to Shellbrook so um yeah, can you tell us a bit more about that and uh, maybe uh, the why in regards to uh, you becoming a teacher? Um, okay, yeah, I always liked babysitting. I always liked children um, and kids, and that was an interest in me. Um, I was the youngest of four kids. Um, I grew up on uh, in a place just um, by Shawbrook as well. So. My why was, yeah, I just enjoyed being around kids and um, thought teaching would be an interesting and fun job. It's, it's um, never boring. It's, it's fast paced. Um, the days go by fast, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I was interested in that. So I, I registered at the U of S, um, did two years of arts and science and then had the dreaded um, interview questions um to, <laughs> to education itself so um i had that and i was crying after my interview thinking i failed i flunked horribly everything like that and then i got the acceptance letter so i was pretty pumped that um i did well in my inter well enough on my interview to um get into education so from there i um my husband is a farmer around here so uh, just when I graduated from university, we were engaged, so I moved back here and awesome. just started jobs around here. And I also like wanted to work with some of these awesome people um, because when I left WP, um, these people were already working here, and I wanted to um, oh. 
see them again. It's Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> Holy Who smoke. else do we oh, have? Oh, this is the comb. This is the comb. Oh, this is I got from my uh, grad book. Mr. Redcock. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. Look Redcock. at oh, look young at him. Oh. oh, and look at look, look at this. Mrs. Wow. Berzowski. Wow. Some good old classic <laughs> people. Oh my god, my face is all red. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were at the, uh, that's great. the start of their careers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so yeah, that's why I I became a teacher because um I had lots of great influences growing up, um, great teachers in the elementary school in Shawbrook, as well as uh, WP. So um, those inspired me as well to um, be as good as them and um, connect with the students and have fun. That's awesome. I don't feel good stuff. So old, really. <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Thank you for sharing that, and uh, yeah, we, we're lucky to have you here at WP and uh, and teaching the kids and and uh, sharing your expertise. And I love all that heart that uh, you shared with us there. Um, one of the other things, just in regards to your curling career, I, I actually um, I don't curl by any means. Um, if you've seen a moose on ice, and that's kind of what you'd see me doing <laughs> on the ice, but uh, I do come from a curling town, um, and I used to be, I think, friends with one of your uh, curling mates at one time, TJ Surik. Yes. Um, TJ uh, Sir, oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Um, and uh, so I'm just wondering what, um, what things you bring into the classroom from your curling experience, the, um, the tips, the tricks, the trades, what you bring to the, the classroom from your experience in that? Um, hmm. Okay. I think sport does a lot for people. Um, it grows a, it grows their character. It makes them more resilient. It helps them per persevere through tough situations. All those kinds of things. So, um, as from sport, you can learn in life, right? So, me taking like I've won lots of provincial championships, but man, I've lost a lot too, right? And so downs. Um, the the when you work so hard for something and it it doesn't happen for you um the goal isn't that um that happens as a teacher too right you're working hard and then you're like i'm failing these kids i you, you know you messed up or you didn't teach it the way it, for all students to learn or different things like that so just being resilient knowing okay that didn't work let's try something else or let's bounce back from this this low and and um, try and work through this or fight through this and, and get better at um, what I do as a teacher in the classroom. So um, sport is learning from your mistakes and the same as teaching, right? You, you try something, um, sometimes it's out of your comfort zone, sometimes it's a huge fail, um, just like in sport, but you've tried and you, can, you have to take it and learn from it. And these are life lessons that I try and help the students understand as well and take throughout life. Like maybe this math assignment or this, you're not gonna use in everyday life, but it's the challenge that you need to have the right mindset to be trying to accept that challenge and persevere through it, even though when it's tough and you don't get it and you, you can't um, make it work right now. Um, in sport, you just keep on trying, right? Or else you quit and uh, for a competitive person, quitting is an option. So um, you just, <laughs> you keep. So I think the resilience part um, and trying to persevere through difficult times is huge in sport and, and in the classroom. So I, I try and help students with that in lessons, classroom lessons, all that kind of stuff. That's wonderful. I appreciate that and appreciate your, your humbleness to share that. Yeah, you do, you do make mistakes and there are failures, but uh, you learn from them, you grow and uh, that uh, failure is a part of success. So keep on trying. So thank you much. Mrs. That's yeah. awesome. I, so it looks like, I know, we are just, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Well, I know I've lost more finals than I've won and I've won nine or 10 and I'm pretty sure I've lost as many as that. I don't keep track of those losses, but either 
far in our finals, we've lost. So, um, yeah, there's there's just equal amounts of lows and highs, right? And and it's to yeah. be there and to persevere through that stuff. Yeah. And then it makes the, the next win even sweeter, right? Sweeter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that you've done the you've done the work, you've reflected, and now you've you know persevered and come through it and won. So yeah, exactly. I know exactly mm -hmm. what you mean. So um, that's huge. It, it looks like we are almost out of time. So I know this time has gone by so fast. I know some people that come on here don't they don't think that they can talk for as many minutes as you know we think they should. But it's, it's you've done a wonderful job, and everyone else has as well. So is there any last words or anything, Chris or Mr. Archibald and Mrs. Kasner, before we go? No, I, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, grateful to have you here and sharing those uh, words of wisdom and uh, words of wellness for for us and not only for the the uh, audience but it's all always enlightening to me and and uh, to all the great experience and the tools that our staff has for uh, perseverance or resilience in life. So, thank you. And well, this is Kasner. thank you too. Yeah, thank you too for having me. Um, I have to say I was quite nervous about this. Um, I don't really like talking in front of a whole bunch of people, but um, <laughs> peers anyways, <laughs> students, I'm okay. Um, but it was, it was fun and I really appreciate what you guys are doing for our staff and students. Um, I love reading these every week or listening to these every week, watching them. And um, yeah, just excited to hear other people's perspective um, and and take on on life and you know this COVID time, right? It's it's sure. different. Hopefully, we don't have it ever again. But uh, how are people embracing it and taking it on? So, Absolutely, yeah, it's it's great. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So. That's the end of Words of Wellness, episode nine. So stay tuned for next week's special guest. So thank you, Mrs. Kasner, again for joining us. We are so happy that you came and so, so happy that you're part of our um, staff. We just look forward to working with you when we get back into the classroom and students are missing you. And uh, we just uh, wish you well and uh, keep on doing what you're doing. So thank you again and thank, thank you. you. So. I miss all you students too at WP. I can't wait to be back, back in there with you and we can have some fun again and um, get back to our routines. It'll be great. So anyway, have a good week right. and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. See you. Goodbye. Take care.